Hello, thank you for joining me. This is my fourth video where I talk you through my National Trust passports. We've already done one, two and three in previous videos. I'm going to do my fourth passport this time. In the next video we'll do my fifth. My sixth one isn't filled up and that's my girlfriend's passport. Um, so these are all here for you to see the evolution of the National Trust passport. So my fifth passport, um, sorry, fourth passport, where did I go? Starts in 2007, Culloden Battlefield. Now, two, two things to note here, I've got two stamps. I did say, um, with Stourhead, is the only one I knew that had two stamps, but that was two, because the estate is so vast, it's, unless you rushed your visit, you can't really visit the house and the gardens in one visit. So, and I think the ha at Stourhead, if you go in the gardens, you go in one entrance and you get a stamp. If you go in the house, you go in another entrance and you get a stamp. So that I, to me, that really is two visits. It's two properties as one. With Culloden Battlefield, it's, it's, um, is the battlefield of Culloden. Um, you know, you sort of basically would see the same thing on each visit. So there were two stamps. They said, which one would you want to like? I said, I love both, please. So I've got both of them. Now, the other thing is, it's, of course, it's National Trust of Scotland. Now, I've not got many National Trust of Scotland stamps. I have been to a few of their properties, but not, um, I either didn't get a stamp. Um, I've been to Gladstone's Land in Edinburgh. What's the other one I've been to in Edinburgh? 28 Charlotte Square. Um, but um, this was the only one I've actually got stamps at. Oh, I, think, I think it is, and there might be another one later. We'll get on to that. Um, so, I'm not sure if National Trust Scotland does their own passport, because if you've got a Scottish passport, like with a membership, if you join National Trust Scotland, you can come to the National Trust ones free if you're a member and vice versa. So as a member of National Trust I get into the Scottish National Trust places without paying. Um, and I will, you know, get their stamps. I don't see the point in getting their passport and doing a different one. I might just, you know, still all National Trust. So yeah, that's Club and Battlefield. Coming back down closer to home, our next one is Eastbury Manor House. Now that's in um, East London, out near Barking. I remember going there on the district line. Um, you know, I probably hadn't ever been that far out on the district line um, then. When was that? It was in 2007. It's before I started really exploring London. Um, so yeah, Eastbury Manor House, one of the urban properties. Um, as I say, with all them, well worth a visit. Now the next one, this is where it really does get a bit different. It's Wilderhope Manor. Now, Wilderhope Manor, I didn't just go there for the day, I actually stayed there a few nights because it's a youth hostel. It's owned by the National Trust, but it's run by the Youth Hosteling Association. So you can, if you want to just go and visit it, you can. But, you know, I wanted to have a holiday in that area. It's up in Shropshire. Might as well go and stay there for a few nights and visit a few other places. On that holiday, I remember I revisited Attingham um, and revisited a few other National Trust properties. I'd already been to when I was younger, so yeah, World Hope Manor, you can go and stay there. It's, I remember spending some evenings looking for priest holes, but I don't actually know if there are any. Next one, Ascot House. In, um, must be on the Buckinghamshire, Bedfordshire border, it's near Leighton Buzzard, which is in Bedfordshire, although I think it is actually still, in fact, it even says on the stamp, it says Buckinghamshire. So yeah, nearest town is Leighton Buzzard, which is in Bedfordshire, but Ascot House is in Buckinghamshire. It's one. It's another one. The Rothschilds houses, like Wadston. Um, it's a Tudor style house. Got quite extensive gardens. So yeah, quite a fascinating property. The next one is the Treasurer's House in York. Now that one, um, it's right in the centre of York by the Minster. It's it's kind of it's three houses knocked into one, I believe. And it's got, it's got a small garden out the front, which you can actually just walk around without paying to go into the property if you just fancy doing that. But, um, you know, every, all the exciting stuff is inside. So, you know, do go do go and visit the Treasurer's House in York. Um, one of many, many, many attractions in York. There's our next one. Oh, and then talking, staying in York, our next one is York Shop. I said about, I'm not sure if you can still get this one. In my last video, I said about the Stratford and Avon shop. That has definitely closed, so you can't get this stamp. As for York shop, as far as I'm aware, the shop is still open. Whether they still stamp passports, so I don't know. I'd like to think they do, because my girlfriend, she hasn't got York shop in her passport, so I'd like her to get it. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure on that one. 
And then, now this was this is the only time that trip to York was the only time I went to York by car. I've only ever gone to York by train except that one trip. On the way back, we stopped at Wallstrop Manor. Now, the, the, the exciting thing you can do there is it's the home of Isaac Newton. And you can sit under the apple tree where he discovered gravity. It's still alive. I think you can even buy apple, you can buy an apple off the apple tree where Isaac Newton discovered gravity. So that's quite exciting. And then on the same day, carried on driving, we went to one of the most unusual properties there is. It's called Lifton New Build. It's a house that was never finished, or it's more um, a folly, really, now. Um, I don't think it was ever meant to be a main house, but it's, so it's not a ruin as in it's all kind of up and down. It, it's very uniform, but it's basically a shell. And I think the new build, although it's not spelled new build, it means new build, I think. Next property, Little Morton Hall in Cheshire. That was where I bought my girlfriend her passport, but not on that visit. This was a few, quite a few years later. We were there and I said to her, I think you should start collecting these. So I said to her, I'm going to buy your passport for Christmas. And um, I did buy her other stuff as well. But yeah, so Little Morton Hall is a Tudor house with a moat around it. Um, it's got a very fascinating long gallery upstairs because it's all sort of, um, you know, as Tudor buildings, as they get old, they sort of sag and... Some people say that the older buildings get, they just have to find a more comfortable way to sit, because if you've been sitting there for 400 years, you probably would. Right, whereas on, oh, and I'll just say, on that visit, um, we also did, no stamp there, but another National Trust property we did visit, tower up on the hill above, um, was Mocop or Malcop Folly. I'm, I'm never quite sure, I've heard people say Mocop, I've heard people say Malcop. Um, visited the Folly up on the hill, where you get brilliant, brilliant views of the area. Where did I go to next? Ah, size of Castle. Up in Cumbria. So it's a big National Trust castle. It's become a stately home. Got lovely gardens. It's in Cumbria. Um, it's about the only one I've been to that you could say is in the Lake District. Um, I've not been to any other National Trust properties up there. It's an area I really should explore more of. I haven't spent a lot of time in the Lake District. Then our next one is Packwood House. Which is in Warwickshire. It's it's a very good one to go to. Um, which I did get, brings on to the next one. The next one's Baddersley Clinton. These two are very close to each other. If you're ever driving up the M40, you get sort of before Birmingham. You want somewhere to stop. Go to one of these. It's perfect. They're both perfect places to break the journey. Now, what happened on this visit? It was raining very very hard all day. So we went to Patwood House. We attempted to do the grounds, but the rain basically rained us off. But we didn't mind, we thought, well fine, we'll just jump in the car, drive five minutes and go to Baddersley Clinton. So we went and did Baddersley Clinton. So we did both houses, but not really the grounds. I have since been back to both of them and made more of a fuss of the grounds. So they're both quite different. Um, Packwood House is more of a manor house, um, you know, in an estate. Baddersley Clinton is a ward manor house. Um, now our next one is a very very small one, it's called Sandham Memorial Chapel, down in Hampshire. It's a fascinating memorial chapel, it is very small, um, if you're going to go out that way I'd suggest perhaps um, let's find a walk or somewhere. I believe on the same day we went to Donington and did a walk around Snellshaw Common. Um, there was an old railway line next to Sandham Memorial Chapel as well, I expect now I'd make more of a thing on that. Um, so yeah, perhaps we'll go there again one day. And another one I spent more than a day at, Colk Abbey. I did a National Trust working holiday, so I went through a stage, I remember this was in 2009, from about 2008, for a few years, I'd do a National Trust working holiday every year. They are really, really good fun. So what happens? Holiday, but you work on the estate every day. Um, you go, you know, you'll have, there's different ones that do different tasks. I tended to do them the ones I would do would be physical work, perhaps we'd build some steps or clearing, um, what's that plant called at Croke? They don't like rhododendrons, clearing rhododendrons, clearing bracken. Um, Cold Cabby, I think we, we literally did a bit of everything. We did an orchid count one day, um, we built some steps in the gardens one day. Another day we went to, which um, we'll get onto in a minute, we went to the old manor at Norbury. Um, 
and we did some work there. So you don't always necessarily stay at the one property and they have their base camp. So um, before that, I'd done one down in Surrey and I'd done one up in Yorkshire, but there was no actual stamp. So yeah, Cold Gabby, I spent a week there. Oh, and I remember it was a really, really hot week. It was so hot. I couldn't sleep at night, so I'd just simply go for a walk around the estate in the dark, but the moon was so bright, and I just remember walking around the gardens. It was a bit like, I was basically, you know like Tom's Midnight Garden? It was like Henry's Midnight Garden at Colk Abbey, so I had a lot of fun at Colk Abbey. Our next one, Sudbury Hall. Now that is Sudbury Hall, I have done a video there, have a look at the link on screen now. I walk around the ground Sudbury Hall, but that was my first visit. It's um, not got a huge amount of grounds, but it's very well known for its Museum of Childhood, which is fascinating. It's a lovely property. Um, my girlfriend tells me it's her favourite property, she said, so um, we'll probably be going back there. It's a good one to go to on a rainy day, because there's not a lot outside, but you've got a Museum of Childhood, and um, it just brings back so many memories, even of my childhood. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you go to the Sudbury Hall Museum of Childhood, it just brings memories flooding back. It is, it's brilliant. So, you know, do go there. It's also, it's just off, um, it's off a main road. I can't think which road it is, but, it, but it's a good one to go to if you're driving from north to south, um, you know, to break a journey at. Then the next one, it's not really a stamp as such, but the lady, she signed it. It's the old manor at Norbury. Now that, we went there when I was doing the National Trust work in Holiday at Colk Abbey. We, so, yeah, on... Going back to work and holidays, you always get a day off in the middle. So on the they'll, they'll organise an activity to do, but if you want, you can do your own thing. So the activity we did, we went to Sudbury Hall and then went to Dovedale. So that was on the day off. On the one of the working days, we went to Norbury Manor. I remember I just had a massive bonfire. Everyone was clearing, you know, um, trees and that. And I just they were just bringing them in their wheelbarrows to me in the middle of the field at Norbury Manor. I had this huge, huge bonfire. It was great fun. I've since done another video at Norbury Manor where I go and explore the ground. So have a look at the link on screen now. You can see more of that, but not on that visit. There's no me bonfiring, but yeah, that's a few years later when I revisited. Our next property is Hanbury Hall, which is in Worcestershire. I remember it's the only place in Britain I've seen a wild... No, it's not the only place. the only National Trust place I've seen a wild service tree, a very rare form of native tree, and I have seen one there. I also remember, you could see the railway in the distance, and I remember seeing a Class 60, 60074 it was. Um, it was in a very distinct livery at the time, so you knew when you saw it, it was that loco. So yeah, Hanbury Hall, um, you can do quite a, very good for big estate walks there. Oh, and the next one, Tintersfield. Um, it's a big Victorian Gothic house just outside Bristol. Uh, huge estate. Um, I actually knew the warden at the time, so um, he took me all around the estate. It's a brilliant place. Um, so, yeah, Tinsfield, well worth a visit. Um, for those of you, I don't know if many of my viewers have, but if any of you have ever watched the um, the gritty drama series Skins, which is set in Bristol, Tinsfield quite often features as like the um, the loony bin. Um, I can't think of a more diplomatic word, but anyway, yeah, so that's what Tinsfield. Um, has you know come up in popular culture there. Our next property is Kedleston Hall, that's up in Derbyshire. Um, so it's it's another big grand um, house. It's not got a huge amount of gardens. It's a bit like Attingham Park. It hasn't got gardens, but it's got a huge, or hasn't got many gardens, should I say? But it's got a huge, wider estate. The last time I went there, I actually parked there, walked around the gardens. And I just had all day, basically. You know, I walked into Derby. I walked to Derby and back from Kedleston Hall. So it's in the country, but it's quite near Derby. Next one, a very small one, Buckingham Charity Chapel. Now it's a small chapel in Buckingham. It's, I think it's mainly a second-hand bookshop now. Um, but yeah, it's worth a visit. Perhaps we should go to Buckingham again and have another look, and I'll show you more of the town. The next one is Plas Newey. That was also visited on a National Trust working holiday. And we didn't actually work at Plas Newey. It's on the Isle of Anglesey. We did a lot of work on the countryside. We got some great views. I remember though, every five minutes getting a text on my phone saying, welcome to Ireland. I was like, I've actually gone to Ireland, but the phone would keep picking up Irish signals. So that was um, quite a good fun. So yeah, we went to Plas Newey on the day off. 
Oh, now another one. I talked about National Trust shops earlier. It's the uh, National Trust shop in Wells in Somerset. Some very nice little. I'm going to call it a city because it's got a cathedral. Maybe it's not a city because it's quite small. It's only probably even less than ten thousand. But it's a lovely little city. Um, Wells. If you ever watched the film Hot Fuzz, that's supposed to be this country village, it's actually filmed in Wales. So yeah, Wales and the cathedral worth a visit. I'd love to do the Bishop's Palace. I didn't on that visit. I should go back at some point and do it. And then on um, a couple of days later, I visited Lights Carey Manor. That's a smallish National Trust property. I think it was raining. It was in October. It was raining all day. So I didn't really explore the grounds, but I went around the house. That's Lights Carey Manor in Somerset. Might be in Wiltshire. Oh, now, next one. A bit of a railway connection here. Helis. It's the National Trust's head office. Um, it was, there's a funny thing there. Well, one the way I went there, I went there on an HST. Now, you probably, there's nothing unusual about going, wouldn't have been then anything unusual about going to Swindon on an HST. What was exciting was that day, HSTs were being diverted up the Chiltern main line. So they go from Paddington up the Chiltern main line, reverse at Banbury because the Bicester Cord hadn't been built then. And then they'd come down and they'd take Foxhall Curve at Didcot, so he got a bit of rare track. So I went, I wanted to do an HST up the Chilton line, I wanted to tick off Foxhall Curve. I did do another video in the first lockdown talking about track bashing, so I explain all about track bashing in that video. So if you have a look at Link, you'll see what I mean. Um, went to Helis, the National Trust head office. Um, I remember I got there and I said to the lady, do you stamp passports? And she said, no, we don't. And I said, but it says in your the passports you do. She said, no, no, we don't stamp them. And I, I said, um, well, why does it say you do? And she said, we don't. So I sort of accepted it. And then as I went out, there was a manager lady. I said to her, do you stamp passports here? And she said, yes, we do. So she went and found me the passport. So, um, yeah, I got I was determined to get Helis stamped. And then we went and visited the Steam Museum next door. Um, so it's all in the old railway works at Swindon. If you go there... So it's mainly a shop and it's the offices, so you can go and get your passport stamp, go to Steam Museum, go and have a walk around the shopping centre. There's also a Steam logo in the shopping centre, which is all part of the old works. Our next one is Church House at Widdicombe in the Moor. A small village, very remote, in the middle of Dartmoor in Devon. Um, I remember going there. Um, I was staying at a youth hostel at Postbridge, right out in the middle of nowhere, and just driving around Dartmoor, stopped at Widdicombe in the Moor and got the church house stamp. It's more of a shop, really. I don't think there's many rooms to see. Um, oh, now another one. You can't get this stamp anymore. It's Blue Coat School in London. Very close to London Victoria Railway Station. The shop is still there. I think the National Trust own it, but they don't. They used to run it as the shop for London. So you go there, you can have a look at the shop, and you can get a stamp. But they stopped running at the shop for London, so I don't think you can get this stamp. So I'm really pleased I got this stamp. Um, if anyone else knows of any stamps you can't get anymore, so like I've said, this Blue Coat School and their Strap Flame shop, if you know of any National Trust passport stamps that you cannot get anymore, please comment and tell me. I'd be very, very interested to know. The next one is Sissinghurst Castle Garden. It's quite an unusual place. Um, so the castle isn't much of a castle, it's basically a big tower, which you get great views over the extensive gardens. It's down in Kent. Should go there again at some point. It might be Sussex actually, Kent or Sussex on the borders. Um, oh, now the next one is a really different one. We've got the next few are actually getting quite different. Dolgeth Fly Gold Mines. In Wales, apologies if I answered that quite correctly. So a gold mine, National Trust have gold mines. Um, and if you go there, you can actually get tours down some of the gold mines. So that, that's, you know, good fun. Um, I think that day, what happened? Yeah, so there were two different tours you could do. I opted, I remember reading up on them and the, I chose the one that basically sounded most interesting. So did they'll get fly gold mines. There's a lot of narrow gauge wagons and narrow gauge railways there. I don't remember seeing any locomotives, but um, it's, um, so I wouldn't say it's one of the greatest trains of Wales, but it's a, somewhere where there is some railway and um, wagons. And there's a bit, I remember there'd been a pit headgear, if I remember rightly. Now, the next one, somewhere very different, is the workhouse in Subble in Nottinghamshire. So, Subble, it's a bit like Wales, it's a miniature city. It's basically 
it's, it's a, a very sm small town that happens to have a minster. Um, so you've got the minster and you've got the workhouse. So, you know, the Victorian work, is it Victorian? The workhouses, so you basically get to see what life was like in a workhouse. So I wouldn't say it's one of the happiest ones you'd go to, but, you know, to learn about history and what went on, you know, it's, it's a different side of things. And then the final one on this one, um, the stamp was literally the National Trust logo, it's fine court in Somerset. That was a bit of a funny one, I, I think we didn't plan to go there, we just ended up going there. There was no house, but there was some quite extensive grounds, so I just remember doing a walk around the grounds. Um, yeah, and got this stamp, so that was my final stamp in my fourth passport. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching. In the next video, um, do my fifth passport. Won't do my sixth passport yet because it's not full up. So um, thank you very much for watching. Do go and visit National Trust places, buy yourself a passport, see if you can catch me up. Maybe you're way ahead of me, I don't know. If you are, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment um, from my kitchen table. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.